And the least I expect you to take out of this experience is pretty much what it's Old San Juan. And what we call Old San Juan is the oldest part of the capital city of Puerto Rico. It's turning 500 years old the same year. That's why you have seen signs around the town with the number 500. And what is interesting about Old San Juan is that it was surrounded by a wall system. It was a walled city. And the tension of the wall was to protect the town from enemies. But the town also has two big forts in each side of it. One of those forts is that one over there. It's called the San Cristobal Castle. And when I say castle, do not imagine kings or queens, right? You gotta think about a military base, a massive structure that can you, where you can fire cannons from, you can shoot at enemies, and it will be very hard to take, to invade from the enemy. And this fort was way bigger than it is now. It has a series, it had a series of other fortifications that extended all the way down to the waters of the bay. So if you look through the trees down there, you will see the base. On the other side of the fort, this one was on the Atlantic side. So it was a barrier, north to south, on a little island where we are standing now. This is a separate island from the island of Puerto Rico. I know this is a lot of information, I'll show you a map and you will understand it better in a little bit, but right here where we have this building, El Casino de Puerto Rico, we had a gate and that was the only access into the town by land. For that reason, we got the plaza here. The plaza was the first place inside Old San Juan where you could meet neighbors, friends, you could have vendors selling stuff on the plaza like we still have around. and. What is interesting is that, as you see, the gate is gone. Guess who destroyed the gate? Any ideas? Americans, good guess. Actually, it's interesting to know that it was destroyed a year before the Spanish-American War. Right? So, in this one, we don't blame the Americans. <laughs> so wasn't Teddy Roosevelt? All right. No, no, no. <laughs> any other ideas? By the way, it wasn't any enemies. No enemy destroyed this. Uh, uh, storm. Uh -uh. Uh -huh. The people of San Juan, the neighbors, the residents of Old San Juan came here to destroy the gate and the fortifications that extended down to the bay. And it was because the town needed space to grow. And the only direction you can grow is in where you see the capital building down there. The rest of the town is surrounded by the bay and the Atlantic Ocean. So there was not much room to expand, right? And that's why it was the neighbors who came here to destroy it. You know who was some of the happiest people with the destruction of the gates? The wives of the town. The gates used to be closed at 9 p.m. And they would reopen at 6 in the morning the next morning, right? For many husbands, that was a really good excuse not to make it home at night. <laughs> now, without any gates, no more excuses. You make it home tonight, okay, honey? <laughs> anyway, now please follow me back to the plaza. There's something there I would like to show you. What year was the Spanish American War? And it very much started with this three ship sailing across the Atlantic Ocean. Do you know their names? We know this from third grade history class. Glad you were paying attention. <laughs> but yes, um, the reason why these ships found the Caribbean first, actually the first place Columbus landed is now an island in the Bahamas. 
The reason why they landed here in the Caribbean first is because this wind current we're feeling. These are called the trade winds. They go from Africa straight into the Caribbean region. And that's how they found this part first. Of course, the colonization started here first as well. And for that reason, in Old San Juan, we have some of the oldest structures built by Europeans in the Americas. The city itself is one of the oldest in the Americas. Right? But now, take a look what happened. This, this guy's made it here. Meeting the locals, that's right. You can also tell that pigeons do not like Columbus. <laughs> well, the Native Americans of Puerto Rico at that time were the Tainos. The Tainos were in Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, where we have Dominican Republic, Haiti, Jamaica, and Cuba. And the conquest was the demise of their culture, right? They were enslaved. They were uh, killed in battles that happened here in Puerto Rico. We had battles between the Spanish and our Native Americans. And there was also diseases that decimated the population to a point that we thought our Tainos were wiped out. And a lot of its culture was gone. We will never know how were they living here. We know we have an idea, but it's not super clear. However, still up until our days, at least half of the population of Puerto Rico has some Native American DNA. And I'm talking about mitochondrial DNA. It's the one that we inherit from our mother's sides. We can trace this centuries back because it is a straight line of ascendancy. And we know that at least half the population of Puerto Rico, one out of two, right, has some DNA from our Native Americans. So in Puerto Rico, what we have was a merge, an integration of cultures since the early 1500s, right? But now take a look what happened after. Come over this way. We saw Tainas in the Dominican Republic. Remember we went to that place where you jumped from the water? Let's see if you know this one. Who is the lady in the throne? Isabella. Isabella of where? Spain. Aragon. Spain, that's correct. Aragon. Ara Castillo, Ara Castillo, Aragon. Castillo de Aragon, right? That's right, that's right. Columbus goes back to her because she was the one who paid for his first voyage. Those first three ships, where the money of the queen. So if somebody's investing on your business, I guess the best thing you can do is show them what you did with your money. That's what he did after his first voyage. He brought Native Americans. And during that encounter, at least one of those natives had a gold medallion. It is called Juanita. And that was good news for the queen, right? Take a look at her, leaning forward, looking at the gold. <laughs> guess what she told Columbus? Me more of that pretty much exactly go back and bring me more all right take a look what happened after <laughs> all right now if your business is doing good and it shows potential what do you do expand you invest you want to make it bigger so you can make more money that's pretty much what the queen did for the second voyage, she sent Columbus with 17 ships. And that's what really started the colonization of the Americas. This one is the last plaque because this is when they landed in Puerto Rico during the second voyage of Columbus, 1493. Now, take a look at the plaque down here on the marbles. Right on the marbles, you can see the year when the monument was placed here. It was 1893. It's precisely 400 years after the first Columbus landing on Puerto Rico. So this is a commemorative monument, but it was built in a time when Puerto Rico was still ruled by Spain. So it makes sense to find him here first place. I guess what doesn't make sense is why we keep him here, right? <laughs> Too much credit. But um, just five years after this monument was placed here, it's 1898, we had the Spanish-American War. Who won it? Not Spain. <laughs> and that's why this tour is in English. 
<laughs> Since the Spanish-American War, Puerto Rico has belonged to the United States because it was the price of the war. However, it has never been part of the United States. It has been an unincorporated United States territory. So if you are born here, are you born an American citizen or a Puerto Rican citizen? What do you think? Citizenship? That's a really good guess, Puerto Rican. But there's not such thing as Puerto Rican citizenship. There's not a Puerto Rican passport anywhere in the planet. We are born Americans. There's no way around it. However, as long as we all Americans live here, we cannot vote for the president of the United States. Right? The people of Puerto Rico only get one representative in Congress who cannot vote. Voice without vote. And it's representing three million people. That's more population than 20 states. For that reason, many people here in Puerto Rico see the relationship of the island with the United States as a colonial relationship, which is pretty much what this guy brought here, colonization, right? So I just wrap up 10 minutes, I mean, 500 years of, of history in 10 minutes. Uh, I know we're missing a lot of details. That was a very brief overview. But along the way, I'll give you a little more details about all this, all right? But now, let me show you where we're going, okay? Let's go to the map. Yeah, go ahead. Come on.